Okay, let's uh, take some uh, tips and tricks on macro photography. Lighting and tips and tricks. Tip number one, the same reason why this cheap, I'm using right now an Nikon D7100, if this sensor were scaled up with the same pixel density, it would be a 50 megapixel, 56, excuse me, megapixel camera. The same thing, <coughs> and the same reason that bird photographers with the, you know, $13,000 400mm f2.8 lenses are using a cheap camera like the Nikon D7100 rather than a D810 for example or a, a D800 or a D70, uh, D750 is because of uh, pixel density, pixel pitch. There's more translational data per square millimeter on this sensor than there is on a full frame sensor. Okay, And I don't know about you or if you do much macro photography but I usually crop my shots when it comes to macro photography. Point number one. Point number two. If you, you can bump your ISO up on your camera as much as you want, you say, well, I'm going to go do some macro bug photography and it's going to be outdoors. That ain't going to work. If it's just bright as hell and you're right at the equator at noonday sun, it's still going to suck. You're going to need artificial lighting for outdoor uh, flash photography for macro. Why? Point one. Depth of field. I don't know if you know how much depth of field is an issue in macro photography, but f16 on this macro lens, ain't, you know, you're talking about a depth of field of like that. If you want some serious depth of field, you're going to have to crank the aperture up there. You're going to have to close it down, and no matter how bright it is, you bump it up, bump it up to ISO 6400, it's not enough. You're going to have to have some sort of artificial light. You're just going to make your life miserable in a living hell, and macro photography is quickly going to become a pain in the crotch. Point number two, nine times out of ten, and this is a hardcore fact, you can ask any macro photographer, you know, oh, the bug's right here, you're sitting on the leaf right there, I want to get here, well, the sun's behind me. Well, you're screwed. Why? Because you're shoving the lens up the ass of whatever it is you're shooting, and psh, there goes the lighting. It's gone. You've just put a uh, light umbrella over whatever it is you're shooting. Right now, I'm using my fiber optic rig, which is of my own design, and it's absolutely a brilliant one. Check out the next video, and I can show you how to make one of these. It's uh, absolutely brilliant. Um, gotta have some artificial lighting. I don't care if it's noonday sun, you're only shooting bugs out in bright daylight, you know, uh, along the equator. You know, unless the sun is cooperating perfectly, and it, you know, most of the time it isn't, you're screwed. So you're going to have to bring artificial lighting. And you're going to want, because of depth of field issues, to uh, increase, you know, your depth of field. I mean, it's not always the case. I mean, you want some shallow depth of field, but I mean, on a macro lens like this, 100mm Tequila 2.8, I mean, uh, even f8 is a shallow depth of field. Even f11 is a shallow depth of field. So you want to crank it down and get some serious depth of field. You know, like even at f11, a, a tiny bug, you know, you could have its face in focus, but the rest of it's going to be out of focus, depending on the size of the bug, obviously. So, uh, point number three. So, a crop sensor camera doesn't have to be, but I usually crop macro shots for obvious reasons, and you will too. There's more translational data per square millimeter on this sensor. Number two, I don't care what you're shooting indoors or outdoors or how bright the sunlight is, you're going to have to bring some artificial lighting to gonna have to bring it. Point number three. I've got a lot of macro ring lights like this. This is it's kind of a cheapie but it works really good. It's not LED, it's actually flash. This fits in the front of the lens, this sits in the hot shoe, gives you nice perfect even illumination. Well there's bringing illumination and then there's having control of your illumination. Um, the same screw-ups that people make in portraiture photography are the same screw-ups people make in macro and all other forms. I'm going to blast it with like, BAM! It's like, oh great. There's no depth or definition to the shot. You just blew out the specular, the diffuse, and the shadow, and you've all meshed it together. It's all become one damn thing. Oh, it's perfectly illuminated. It's perfectly exposed. What are you talking about? Yeah, it is. But it's got no definition! Arrgh! That's a neat little thing that starts with a C called composition. Yeah, that means that, uh, you know, you know, I uh, once I used to drink uh, extremely expensive uh, Jamaican Blue Mountain coffee, which is just the tits, and uh, I accidentally put too much sugar in it once. You know, I love sugar with my coffee, and uh, you know, it's like well, I added sugar to it, but now I can't taste the coffee. All I taste is the damn sugar. 
And people make the same mistake with uh, flash photography, whether it's portraiture or macro. They'll blast it with light. Boom! Yeah, I got the light. It's perfect. It's got no definition. I can't tell. The same reason that people don't shoot noonday light is the same reason, you know, people choose early morning, late evening light. It's the same reason why I've got a single point light source here. This is very useful if I'm going to do something technical and I want it perfectly illuminated. Or if I want this effect. Compositionally, if I want this effect, I'll slap this on there. Beautiful. Great. It's lovely. It's perfect ring lighting. Boom. And, you know, I've got some really expensive studio ring lights over there. Those are beautiful for portraiture. But I don't always want that. You're going to have to make the decision. This is an important, this is one of the serious issues in photography, is that people think, well, I'm going to blast it with light, I'm going to perfectly expose it. Yeah, but you destroyed the composition and the process. You destroyed the depth and the definition that the photograph has. The natural three-dimensional nature that that flat two-dimensional image could have, but you destroyed it by going BOOM! You blasted the piss out of it with light. So, macro photography tip number one. DX pixel pitch is better, period. Because nine times out of ten, I don't care who you are, you're going to crop your macro shots. You are. If you don't, then you're, you're, there's something wrong with you. Point number two. Selective lighting, like I just got done talking about. You're going to have to bring, not the selective lighting, but you're going to have to bring lighting, period, excuse me. You're going to have to bring lighting, period. I don't care if it's noonday sun, you're going to have to bring the lighting. I'm going to shoot bugs at 12 noon out in the field on the roses. Well, you know what, if the sun is behind you, you want to shoot the but as soon as you've done it, it's like, whoops, the sun, you know, it's blocked out and he's in the shadow now. You kind of have to bring the lighting. Hmm. Every, it doesn't matter what time of the day it is. And then selective lighting. I can blast the hell out of macro shots with ring lighting. I've got other macro mod tools that I created, my own invention. This is my own invention too, and it is a tits. I am a effing genius for this particular invention. I love it. I'm a genius for a lot of things, yeah. I'm also fat and ugly, but I'm still a genius. But so, those are the three macro tips and tricks. Tips and tricks. DX pixel pitch. Gotta bring the lighting regardless, and don't blast the hell out of your shot just because you can. Well, it's perfectly illuminated. It's perfectly exposed. Yeah, but you destroyed it in the process. Damn. Okay? Pretty simple, right? Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Mm, bye.